na iwa sa ningaw na ni Bakatara, baka binibin na tayo. Bula! Oi, eu sou a Sala Bilawa. Não vou ter que ir ao menos de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou arrombo cá. Caco Neva Latana, não me sou inicerçari. Na Caixa Maria Andola Loma, Leão Neva Nininau. Ou me gore que é de menos de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou arrombo cá. É na Bula FM. Namban 2 é na Serre. Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight, new Catholic Archbishop is officially installed. Preparations already underway for 2014 budget. And LTA impersonators at it again. Welcome to FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. The leadership of the Roman Catholic Church of Fiji was officially handed over to new Archbishop Father Peter Loy Chong today by his predecessor Petero Matada. In the handing over at the Sacred Heart Cathedral in Suva this morning, Matada reminded Archbishop Chong that his calling is beyond him and that he must continue the teachings of the Church. Roland Karoy reports. The Sacred Heart Cathedral hosts about 800 people, but this morning they came in the thousands, pouring out onto the streets, all wanting to be part of their new Archbishop, Father Peter Loy Chong's first Mass. Inside the cathedral, Father Chang was escorted by his predecessor, Petero Matava, to occupy his seat as the new leader of the Catholic Church of Fiji. It was a walk described by the new archbishop as emotional, but one he took with confidence. Yeah, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's a very emotional, you know, and um, I know he's also emotional. I am also emotional. It's not uh, easy to, for, because for him it's a long experience to let go of that. And uh, so that sets the tone. And, uh, but like I say, I, I, I walk with confidence knowing that uh, with, with the grace of God and the support of people, uh, you know, we can rise to the occasion. In conducting his first Mass, Father Chong called on his priests, the different congregations and the many present to support him in his journey as their Archbishop. And for the leaders of the country, he had this message. If our leaders really believe in the fundamentals of God's kingdom, of love, peace, justice, reconciliation, of serving the common good of the people, the poor especially, those who are deprived of their <laughs> dignity. These are the fundamentals for freedom and liberty. He told those present that the task that lay ahead of him wasn't easy, but he was ready to take on the challenge with the backing of his congregation. Father Chong is the only second Fijian to be ordained Archbishop of the Catholic Church of Fiji. Roland Karoy, FBC News. A total of 5,648 Fijians have registered to vote since the commencement of the third phase of the EBR last week. This adds to the 500, 5,036 Fijians who registered during the previous phases. A government statement says that in addition to this, 745 lost voter ID cards were replaced and 380 Fijians made corrections to their personal registration details. Fijians interested in registering during Phase 3 are being reminded to make sure they have one form of valid identification before going to register. AVR teams are stationed in locations around the country on Mondays through Saturdays and mobile registration teams will be going door-to-door -door on Sundays. With half a year already gone, preparations are well underway for Fiji's 2014 national budget. Finance Ministry Permanent Secretary Filimoni Wangabada says they have outlined major strategies which will be put forward to Cabinet next month. Ritika Pratap reports. 
2014 is an important year for Fiji, with national elections to be held in September. Philemoni Wangabada says they are sticking with the vision to grow the economy and policies will be introduced to allow the country to move in that direction. At this point in time, we've already formed that strategy and uh, that will then go to, uh, to parliament, uh, to, to cabinet um, in um, this uh, next month, in July, uh, where it needs to be endorsed and then we will begin to, to talk with the, once uh, cabinet approves that, that strategy that we have, then we will begin uh, talking with the private sector um, and also government agencies as we design the uh, 2014 budget. National budget preparations begin immediately after the announcement of a new budget and the finance ministry says they've already designed their strategies. We have grown uh, quite well compared to 2010 where we achieved lower growth. 2011 we've increased in 2012 and now this year much higher. Consistent growth of a number of periods which uh, has not been seen for a while. Uh, we would really like to be hitting 5% uh, growth or more. The ministry will tap more into the private sector to increase investment activities. Prior to 2012, 2010 and 2011, it was actually government doing all the investments. Eh? Uh, and it continues to do that even this year. And uh, I think government may continue to, uh, will, will still need to hold uh, the fort moving forward uh, in, in terms of uh, increasing investment in the economy. The 2013 budget was a little over $2 billion. Bulk of that money was allocated for infrastructure development as the government believes this will bring in more investment. Next year's budget will be announced in November. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority has turned to the police to assist them in their investigations of people impersonating LTA officers. These impersonators have scammed thousands of dollars out of members of the public who have been promised LTA permits. Roland Karoy reports. It's happened in the past and yet people are still falling victim to LTA impersonators. Posing as LTA managers, the impersonators deal with their victims over the phone promising them different permits in exchange for cash. Members of the public are then told to deposit the money in a bank account, and in most cases, the unsuspecting customer only finds out it's a scam after the cash is being deposited. We have estimated that from last year to this year, close to $30,000 have been, uh, you know, uh, people have spent around that much, you know, people have been tricked. Uh, to, to spend, uh, to deposit uh, that amount of money. A point of concern also for the LTA is the information that impersonators are privy to. According to Ilyasa Sokia, the names of two senior managers have been used and this may prompt an internal investigation. We do uh, suspect that uh, there are elements of uh, collusion which would be involved within uh, this a case that uh, we would probably need to investigate further and ascertain how true and where this information is coming from. The advice from the LTA has been the same since this issue came to light. If you're applying for a permit, visit your nearest LTA office and deal directly with LTA officers. The authority believes it's because of the negligence of this simple advice that's landed people in this situation. Roland Karoy, FBC News. In the news ahead, an Australian economist takes on Fiji's economic performance. Aapki shadi hone wali hai. Paanj paanj bachche honge. Paanj paanj. Paanj paanj. Hi, I am your friend, Venu. Listen to me, I am your friend, I am your friend, I am your friend. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. 
And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Welcome back to FBC News. Fiji's current economic status should be an opportunity for the country to look into lifting its performance. According to Australian economist Justin Smirk, Fiji's economy is stable, but more can be done. Eleanor Turangai View has more. The huge economies of the world, stable or otherwise, often face risks, and Fiji is no exception. Fiji is in a position where, at the moment right now, um, it's relatively stable. Um, there are some risks out there, but they're not major risks unless we have a major financial crisis. And in that environment, it gives Fiji some time to look at its own opportunities and how it can build on its opportunities. Justin Smirk says Fiji has to take action now to maintain its current stable economy. We're seeing what they can do internally, what they can do in terms of lifting services, what they can do in terms of lifting manufacturing, how they can encourage business investment in their own country, how they can free up the capital that's here and free up the skills of the people to do more. So I think the opportunities are there and Fiji has a window to, to take advantage of that. Smirk also commended government's policy on this year's budget, which he says will increase investment and consumption, amongst other things. Running a slightly easier fiscal policy, that is government spending more money and helping to lift consumption, changing the tax arrangements to help boost consumption, encouraging the use of credit, I think is all good. In this environment where you're facing some global slowdowns and global risks, helping lift domestic demand as an offset is a good thing. Smirk says Fiji has an opportunity to become the regional services hub if it uses the opportunities available to utilize skills of the people here. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Three people remain admitted in hospital after they were allegedly stabbed at a drinking party yesterday. The two women and a man suffered serious injuries from the attack, which happened in Suva. Police believe the suspect went with the three to their flat where the alleged incident happened. The suspect fled the scene when neighbours went to the flat after hearing the disturbance. Police have yet to determine the motive behind the alleged attack. A special team has been tasked to investigate the matter and to arrest the suspect. He is known to police. Fiji still faces problems with aviation search and rescue services despite the much improved standards. However, hopes are that the drafting of the search and rescue decree will determine a way forward. Akusita Tale has more. Airports Fiji Limited is not only responsible for search and rescue services in Fiji. Its flight information region goes as far as Kiribati and Tuvalu to the north of Fiji, New Caledonia and Vanuatu to the west of Fiji, and Wallis and Futuna towards the east of Fiji. For that, it guides what we need to have in terms of facilities, uh, equipment, uh, training, and all those requirements in order to provide a efficient uh, search and rescue services. With all these still lacking, what makes it more difficult is the advancement in technology that authorities are yet to acquire. In absence of that, we uh, request assistance from New Zealand, uh, Australia and even uh, Joint Rescue Coordination Centre in Honolulu to provide us uh, plots uh, of search area determination and even drift models in the event that an aircraft uh, drops within the flight information region and search and rescue is required to be activated. The government has stepped in to improve standards by reviewing Fiji's search and rescue decree. The Aviation Authority has high hopes that an integrated approach will be imposed to better network between aviation, maritime and land operations. Aeronautical and maritime SAR services have actually come together to review our manual so we more have a more integrated approach and each one is able to help each other and make use of what um, little available resources that we may have. In terms of Fiji's geographical location, it's important that necessary frameworks, equipments and facilities are available. This way, Fiji will be on par with neighboring countries like New Zealand, Australia and the USA. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The National Federation Party held its working committee meeting at Lovu Sangam village in Lotoka today. Party President Raman Pratap Singh says the discussions centered around the draft constitution, the party's upcoming Golden Jubilee celebrations 
and the annual general meeting. Singh says during the meeting they also explained to their members the role of the United Front for a democratic Fiji. He says the members were told that the NFP is working together with the Fiji Labour Party and the Social Democratic Liberal Party and FICTU and a united stand will be taken against the draft constitution. In sports next, a major blow to the Fiji under-20 rugby team ahead of their Junior World Cup clash with Ireland in France tomorrow. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9am to 2pm on The Centre Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन बी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Baby Flying Fijians have suffered a major blow ahead of tomorrow's pool match against Ireland in the Junior World Championship in France. After an IRB judiciary hearing, Fiji's Inside Centre, Sevenea Nangalala, has copped a six-week suspension while his teammate, Viliame Rarasea, has been slapped with a two-match suspension. The duo were found guilty of dangerous tackles in their JWC opener against New Zealand on Thursday. Nangalala's charge effectively rules him out of this year's tournament, while Rarasea will miss Fiji's games against Ireland and Australia. Either way, the games must go on. Fiji under-20 coach Bill Nangadolo has made eight changes to his team to face Ireland tomorrow morning. The Fiji Pearls arrived in the country happier than ever to remain the Pacific netball queens for another four years. The FPC sports team caught the girls' arrival at Nandi Airport last night. Elena McDonald has more. A welcome fit for the Pacific Netball Queens. The Fiji Pearls proved too strong yet again in Samoa with an unbeaten run to reign supreme as the Pacific Netball Series champs. Um, right now, the, all I can say is God is good. You know, he's been uh, the source of strength in this team and we, we're giving back the honour. And yes, it's, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've secured again the, the title for, for, for another four year, for fourth year and uh, you know, all the credit goes to these players. You know, they have uh, worked really hard for the last couple of months and uh, you know, their performance in the last three days was just phenomenal. While it's all cheers and glory now, prior to the tournament in Samoa, the Fiji side had ironically considered themselves the underdogs. And you know how the rivalry is, but you know the players have given the 100% of training. You know, I, I, I would be honest. I mean, to be honest, that uh, you know, going to the PNS, we were not that 100% fit. But like I mentioned before, the the unity and the love and the bond within the team itself is what pulled us through. Their success so far, while attributed to many supporters in Fiji. Those away from home provided that extra boost needed by the players. Areas that we need to work on. I guess on the day, you know, the girls went out there with a mission, and especially uh, playing the host country, it's not easy. But you know, what's, what was amazing is that the support we got from Allah at some um, with uh, Allah for uh, campus students. Um, we just mentioned it was like uh, walking into the national stadium uh, with the Coca-Cola games. The, the sound of cheering. It it's back to the drawing board for this lot while the under-21s will begin the hard yards tomorrow in preparation for the World Youth Championships in Scotland later this year. Elena MacDonald, FBC Sports. Ryan Fox has successfully defended the 2013 Fiji Golf Open. The New Zealander ruled the Watuanga Greens this afternoon, finishing ahead of fellow professional golfers Nick Gillespie and Daniel Pierce. Elena MacDonald spoke to Fox, who highlighted the weekend as a happy one. What did it take to retain the Fiji Golf Open this weekend? Played a bit scratchy the first two rounds and um, especially on Friday it was a bit, a bit windy and, and wet. And, but I got out to the weekend and played really, really well. I got the part of the work and I had some really good shots so it was just good fun out there. 
This year saw a handful of professional golfers take to the Vatuanga Greens, describing the turf as challenging. Oh, they're a bit of a struggle, but I've played enough over here and in, in, in the islands to kind of get used to it. And I mean, you just got to take them for what they are. They're going to be a little bit bumpy. They're going to be a little bit slow, but. All in all, I, mean, I didn't have too much trouble on for the week. All in all, the closeness of the game spoke for itself over the four days of competition. Yeah, I mean, they're all good friends of mine and we had a lot of fun out there and it was looking pretty tight on the front nine and I just managed to hold a few more putts on the back nine and stay in front. Everyone pleased with the end result. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Samuel Tui became the new Pineapple Cup champion at the Suva Bowling Club today. However, this was not the first time the local bowler has rested his hands on the 89-year-old silverware. FBC Sports then asked him what it was like to win today. I would have loved to play him this year and, and, and actually get it back from him as a winner. But since he can't make it this year, so I can't say that it was easy, but all those bowlers that were out there were fantastic bowlers. So he was also the winner of yesterday's men's singles event during the Pacific Bowling Carnival held all week at the club. Winning major tournaments is one thing, but defending it afterwards is even harder. That's what's on the table for the All Freight Logistics Suva football side when they begin their defence of the Vodafone Fiji Fact Trophy, starting with Lambasa on Saturday. As Elena McDonald reports, it's been a very busy weekend for the lot. With six days remaining to the start of the Fiji Fact, the Whites have gone the extra mile by playing three 90-minute games within the last two days. And by the looks of things, they need to. To see the players' performance and whatever we have done in the training, I want to see them doing that. And just now we played Lemmy. In first up, we made a lot of mistakes, even second up. Goal scoring opportunities, we're still missing a lot of goal scoring opportunities. And then Lemmy came back and scored, we won 3-1. But uh, we have to tighten up our defence too. With Lambasa first up on their list at the ANZ Stadium on Saturday, Suva's strike force is going to have to be on target. Different strikers in the first half, then different strikers in the second half to see all of them. We got five of them, five or six of them. So, and we didn't have a lot of in. But uh, overall I think uh, we created a lot of opportunities. That's a good positive sign, that's a good sign that uh, within the game you create opportunities. Uh, some games you don't get any opportunity to score goals. The challenge for Singh is working on a newer bunch this year, with the hope that key player Ralph Sherwin returns in time for the tournament. The death in his family, uh, I haven't heard from him. Today the officer had to go and see him. And so I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. Against Lamy today, players were reminded that in order to maintain their championship title, they're going to have to get a little dirty and aggressive to show they mean business. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Savu Savu and Suva were the only centres that had cloud cover today. And apart from this, it was fine weather across the country. Lambasa heads the temperature chart tonight with 33 degrees at 4 this afternoon. Suva and Savu Savu were the coolest. Tomorrow's weather should be fine apart from a few showers for the capital. And looking into the new week, it should be fine weather. The headlines again, a new Catholic Archbishop is officially installed. Preparations already underway for 2014 budget and LTA impersonators at it again. The weekly poll question now. And this is your last chance to take part before it closes tomorrow. We ask, can Fiji win the Pacific Nations Cup? Visit www.fpc.com.fj to have your say. And remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj. Until next time, good night.
Nimbula, medhangu nimi lote na isoro tumbua. Na makia uminorua kinaona na vya kavi muni tiki na vaka rombuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vipo kwa baru takini ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai na makia ukina. Nisambulo vinaka, oya wane kama na langi, oni nandoro mwezi yao, maina ziwa kina ruwe na visinga, maina mwoni tiki na waka rumbu, kena radio fiji wana ndome ibiti bongani vya nyanu. Na mwaka talengana vya ngono sasi vya nyanu, tina kaloko na vimbongi ni buki lulu, kena vima mani walu na vimbongi ni waka ruwai, maina mbuza ni walu, ninge na mwaka.